before going to inflammatory back pain almost all of us have experienced lower back pain any time in our life it is the most frequent disorder of humanity after common cold so does it mean that all of us have ankylosing spondylitis obviously not so what is that that makes it a different feature to be called as a feature of ankylosing spondylitis first is the location the low back pain corresponds to the location of the si joints basically why i am saying this because sacroiliitis is one of the first or early manifestations of ankylosing spondylitis that means inflammation of sacroiliac joint so the pain actually happens on that side only where our si joint is present it is also the same area where our back pocket of the trousers is so patient will put his hand there that i have pain there and usually there is history of alternating pain between the two sides sometimes it may remain only one sided as well so what is the inflammatory word what is the meaning of this term when we talk of inflammatory back pain there are many criterias many uh, definitions of inflammatory back pain one of the latest one is given by the ss which stands for assessment of spondyloarthritis international society they say at least four of the five should be present age of onset we have already discussed it should be insidious onset if you ask a patient of ankylosing spondylitis when did your back pain start he may not be able to pinpoint that to a particular day or particular week because it is gradually increasing it has a very gradual onset so it is not acute like in acute pivd type the pain improves with exercise it is very important to know there is no improvement with rest and pain at night is there lot of people who have inflammatory back pain may tell that there is their sleep is disturbed because of this they are not able to turn in bed it is a very important point if you ask the patient can you turn in bed in the night they say they have difficulty they have pain over that area where they are having pain and the pain at the night may be worse in the second half because as the activity decreases the inflammatory cytokines and the joint fluid accumulates and it causes inflammatory kind of a pain so we have discussed these issues a patient who has inflammatory back pain or have ankylosing spondylitis related back pain may also give history of uveitis he may have oral ulcers oral ulcers are usually associated more if they have concomitant inflammatory bowel disease they may have inflammatory peripheral arthritis also they may say that with the inflammatory back pain they have knee pain knee swelling or ankle pain ankle swelling in that scenario it is a very good clue that we are dealing with ankylosing spondylitis then patient may give history of urethritis because i told you reactive arthritis is the one which is usually a self limiting short disease but ankylosing spondylitis is a chronic disease and this kind of a disease may be precipitated with the first episode of infection or may have flares if a person has genito urinary or gastrointestinal tract infection patient may give history of psoriasis or patient may have history of inflammatory bowel disease so if you see all these are the the definitions of various spondyloarthro spondyloarthritis group of diseases which we had discussed in the introduction chapter features which are not suggestive of inflammatory back pain are also important because sometimes you may not be able to differentiate but then you should know which are the features are not suggestive of inflammatory back pain older age it is not absolute i have seen people in 50s and rarely in 60s also who may develop ankle sprain but usually all the patients have symptom onset in age less than 40 years abrupt onset is usually not related to ankylosing spondylitis if there is history of trauma radiculopathy if they have fever night sweats weight loss it could be related to infective pathology or 
tuberculosis as it is common in indian scenario if there is history of cancer it could be related to metastasis inflammatory back pain almost always improves with exercise so if it is worsening with exercise it is not in favor of that and if patient has other features which are not <coughs> related to ankylosing spondylitis and the back pain is associated with generalized aching